relief more of a short-term relief by limiting it to only three years, which also has the effect of reducing the overall projected cost of the bill subject to PAYGO. The point of the matter today is that H.R. 22, as introduced, presents a possible significant uh, PAYGO issue, which may prevent the bill from potentially seeing the light of day on the House floor, unless we take the steps now to reduce the bill's fiscal impact. I know many of us disagree with the preliminary and unofficial scoring approach that CBO has taken with H.R. 22, but the reality is that there is a score, and, and that does matter. Uh, and to date, we have not been able to find an offset uh, for such, such scoring. And uh, by reducing the bill's applicable time period to three years, we anticipate the bill's price tag will drop dramatically as well, making it a bit more manageable going forward in terms of either finding an offset or for obtaining floor consideration of this legislation. In short, uh, my friends, the Postal Service's current financial predicament goes beyond grave at this point, and time is of the essence. So the amendment being offered to H.R. 22 is designed only to allow the Postal Service to live to fight another day. With the, United, with the United understanding that much more work remains to be done by all, including Congress, the administration, the Board of Governors, the PRC, the employee groups, and our postal unions, as well as the mailing community. I hope all members will support this amendment, and I now yield to the ranking member, Mr. Chaffetz, for five minutes for any comments he may have on this amendment. Are there any other members? Uh, Mr. Cummings. Okay. If no other member wishes to speak on the amendment, the question is now on the Lynch Amendment and the nature of a substitute. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it and the amendment is adopted. I now move that the Subcommittee on Federal Workforce, Postal Service, and the District of Columbia report H.R. 22 as amended to the Committee on Oversight and Government Reform with the recommendation that the bill does pass. The question is on a favorable reporting of H.R. 22 to the Committee on Oversight and Government Reform. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The motion is agreed to, and H.R. 22, as amended, is ordered reported to the Committee on Oversight and Government Reform. Well, while we acknowledge that this has taken some time to get movement on this bill, we wanted to make sure that what was put forth by the subcommittee had a reasonable chance of ultimately being enacted. This is very important. Uh, I'm glad that we have been able to make progress on the bill today, and I look forward to working with each of our stakeholders to move this process forward over the next couple of weeks as we move to full committee and thereafter. This concludes our business for today. I ask unanimous consent that the staff be authorized to make technical and conforming changes to all matters ordered reported without objection so ordered. The committee now stands adjourned.